It's a model! Welcome to Everything's Better in Slow Mo! Hello! Hello! <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Everything's Better in Slow Mo. Did you know that forced perspective is an optical illusion where an object may be larger or smaller than it actually is? This is done by controlling the distance and vantage point between you and the camera. And if done correctly, can make the optical illusion seem like all objects in a scene occupy the same space. For example, in this clip here from Safety Last, it would appear that Harold Lloyd is hanging very dangerously above a busy street. But in fact, it is the very opposite. He is merely inches from the ground. A very good use of forced perspective. Another example of forced perspective you can see here in Modern Times starring Charlie Chaplin, where he's skating precariously close to the edge. It looks amazingly dangerous, but it really isn't the case. It's just amazing forced perspective with a matte painting on glass. When achieving this illusion, it is very important to pick a camera setting that can keep them both in focus. This is when you'd want to use a fairly narrow aperture. F16 should do the trick. Because this technique requires such a small aperture, make sure your scene is well lit your ISO settings cranked up enough, but not too much for your footage to become noisy. Also using a wide angle lens to create deep focus. Generally, anything under 35 millimeters is considered wide angle. One of the best uses of illusion is in the fantasy type movies, and no one executes this technique quite like the Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings Force Perspective is specifically notable because it demanded a ton of manipulation, not only in the positioning of the actors, but also in the prop building and the moving force perspective it required. Our next film example is a holiday classic. And nothing rings holiday spirit quite like the giant-sized elf in the movie Elf. The filmmakers built part of the set in combination to where they positioned Will Ferrell to the camera. This created the illusion that his character was much larger than the other elves. This is an alternative method than the use of CGI. And to me, it's more magical to watch. Hi guys, we've got the original shots all done with the tank, with me running, uh, all shot at a separate location. Uh, we couldn't do any of the explosions there apart from the non-explosive ones. So now we've got it all set up in a nice safe environment, my back garden. So we've got this here air pump that's going to push our gases through a tube all the way along and we've got corn flour in the cap here which is going to be pushed up on the trigger release 
which we've got safely set up on a string. Okay, good there. So we're filming these shots on a mobile phone. And when we take them into post-production, we'll key out the green screen and hopefully these should fit nicely into our clip. Indeed. So we're just using ordinary cornflour. You can pick this up at any shop. Yep. It's not really explosive as such, but it gives off a nice white powder effect, like smoke. Right, you ready? Okay, recording. Okay. Now we shot this over two days. On the first day we shot the miniature effect with the tank. It's a 116 scale model tank, fully remote control. If you want full specs on this, we'll leave a link in the description below. Now we're not affiliated or sponsored in any way by this company, it's just a nice way to go online and check the full specs. We shot the action sequences on the same day because we wanted to create a movie sequence for the beginning of this episode to show what the forced perspective would look like in a cinematic way. Now, Obviously, we couldn't shoot the practical effects. It was a public area and safety precautions, and it'd be too dangerous. So we've actually done the practical effects on a separate day. So on day two, we were in my backyard. We set up a, a green screen, as you can see here, and an air pump system. Now, an air pump system works really well. It's nice and cheap, very, very safe. Because we haven't got an explosive license, this is the best way to do it. We use corn flour because that's all we had at hand. And if you're a backyard effects person, this is really good, nice and cheap, very easy to get hold of. If you're using explosives, it's very dangerous and you need a license. Using a pressurized system works really well. And it's nice and cheap. So we did a few tests and we found that corn flour worked really well. As you can see here, we ran the tests a couple of times. A couple of times it didn't work but then we really did capture some really good ones. This one here, for instance, works exceptionally well. The cornflower here kind of looks like smoke, but then it ignites. So at the end of the day, we had the comp shot, which is the green screen, and we had the stunt effects and the miniature effects. And Drew managed to comp them all together, and they looked really quite good. Now there's a little bit of tweaking to do, and remember, this is a no budget effect. There's no CGI, it's all shot within camera and it cost us about two pounds. So try it yourself. It's really quite, quite a cool effect. Now this is the tank that we used. The bog standard tank itself is pretty basic and you need to paint it up to make it look decent. But with it being radio control, it really does become a really good asset as a model. In order to achieve this effect and make it look realistic, both objects must be on the same level to look like they're in the same space. Yeah. For instance, if you've got a camera that's a foot off the ground, the tank would be just miniature, it'd be so small. But if the tank's the same level as the camera in its plane, it would look massive. <laughs> well folks, now you know how forced perspective is done. Why don't you try it yourself? Just be sure to position the camera appropriately and use maybe even a little model just to try it out. It's ridiculously simple. Anyway, we'll catch you next time on Everything's Better in Slow-Mo. <laughs> Ciao for now.